start off this morning with a question. Why are you here this morning? What are you hoping for in being, you know, getting up early on a Sunday morning and coming to church? What, what, what do you want in being here today? So I thought about that question for myself. My immediate response was, I want to know you more, God. I want to experience you. I want to be touched by your love. I want to experience awe. I want to know your glory, catch a glimpse of your mind and how you think and somehow experience your being. And in that experience, I want to be changed in knowing you, become more fully myself, become more fully human, the way you made me, made us to be. The second century church father Irenaeus said famously, the glory of God is a human being fully alive. And often people just read that part of the quote, but the second part of the quote is critical. And to be alive consists in beholding God, seeing God, knowing, experiencing God. I want that. And in order to get that, Jesus teaches, I need to be connected to Him and stay connected to Him and find all of my being and identity in life through Him. In the Gospel of John, His words are recorded in this way. Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my Father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. And then looking to his disciples, he says, You were already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, and you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you're like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you remain in me, and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. So the, the key to being fully human and fully alive and fully you, according to Jesus, he said it five times in that one passage, is to remain in me. Like how a healthy branch remains in the vine or the tree. Maybe he was even looking at a vineyard as he said those words to his disciples. Remain in me like that, and you will be fruitful. As soon as I wrote those words this week, writing my message, I looked out across the street, and there was a really cool tree with all kinds of pruned branches, but very healthy. So I ran over, and I took pictures of the branches coming out of the tree. The neighbors probably were creeped out a little bit, but it was just so beautiful. I mean, right there across the street, preaching at me. Like how a branch is of the same nature as the tree from which the branch comes, each bow bearing the tree's image remain in me. Like how a branch is nothing on its own but everything when it's part of something bigger than itself, and is interdependently related to the tree, bringing to the tree what the tree needs and bringing from the roots to the leaves what the leaves need. All of it interdependent on the environment and everything surrounding it remain in me. 
Do that, Jesus says, do that, and you will bear much fruit. So are you hearing that? Are you seeing what he's saying? Every time you pass a tree and have passed a tree in your life, if you've been on this Christian journey and know that story of Jesus, every time you pass a tree and through every branch that he's ever made, Jesus is whispering, remain in me. Over the past month or so, I've been in conversation with two people, a friend in Vancouver named Rachel Crone, who used to go to New Hope and studied at Regent and loves Bible languages, Hebrew and Greek, and Dr. Vern Peters, who is the chair of the biology department at the King's University College in Edmonton. And I spoke to both of them about these ideas and about this branch imagery that Jesus used because I wanted to know more about in particular, what the phrase, to me, the key is this remain in me phrase. What, is, what does it mean, really mean, to remain, remain in him? And I figured the answer lied in two places. One, in why God's Spirit led the writers of the Gospel, John to use the Greek words that he used to represent the English translation, remain in me, precisely those words, and looking at the plant science and the biology, try to figure out what the science of how a branch connects to a tree or a vine, assuming it was made by God, says about what it means to remain in me. So the Greek word first is meno, which is translated to remain or to abide, and it's used mostly in the New Testament and mostly by John, and mostly in the middle chapters of John, this one included. And remaining in is used in the context of the Holy Spirit, remaining in Jesus. So it's that kind of an intimate remaining in. It refers to God's Word when God speaks, remaining in you, that you take it and that you keep it, and you take it into yourself deeply. It carries a sense of holding on to, and a sense of belonging to. In John chapter 14, Jesus spoke about how he embodied, he embodied what it means to remain in. He said, don't you believe to his disciples that I am in the Father and that the Father is in me? The words I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. I'm a branch, is what he's saying. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor, nor knows him, but you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. The vascular system of a tree, the core that brings the nutrients back and forth to wherever it's needed in the tree, it runs through the whole system and just is in the branch and in the vine. Anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. My Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. And you'll belong, like how that branch perfectly belongs to that tree. And on that day you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Come together right now over me. To be here and to be searching out who Christ is is to be called to abide in Him as much as that big branch is abiding in that tree. In that tree that is abiding in the roots like Jesus is abiding in His heavenly Father. To remain in and hold on to and belong to Him is to remain in, hold on to, and belong to God. And Jesus is the conduit, the way. Two Old Testament prophets, Zephaniah and Isaiah, call Him the branch. 
He's a branch. And through him, we're rooted in God, and we're grafted into this big story, Old Testament too, God's Old Testament covenant story that I will be your God and you will be my people. Through Christ, we are grafted into that tree. He connects us to that big story, to history. The prophet Isaiah foretold, he said, In the days to come, Jacob will take root. The people of Israel will bud and blossom and fill all the world with fruit. Even now in our city, as all of these trees are budding and blossoming, this promise is true that God will fill all the world with fruit. The God who made all trees. And in God's infinite, crazy, foolish, beautiful wisdom, it'll come through you. Not just the pastor guy, you know, who got called out of business into the ministry. Da, 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 da. Because that would be fairly useless for reaching the whole world and filling it with fruit but to you in business and to you in school and to you in life and loving and family and all the places God has put you. God will fill his world with fruit. So that's the Greek word, biblical theological side of remaining in and what it yields. What about the science? What about the physical nature of the plant, the tree? What does that teach us about remaining in Jesus? What have you got for us there? That was my question for a month. And it was killer for me. I struggled with that for weeks and weeks, and even this week, especially this week, because Sunday is a coming. First of all, because I know very little about science, so you always feel like you're stepping out on a limb when you preach on stuff, I guess. But secondly, because I was asking the wrong question. I didn't even know I was asking the wrong question about this particular issue. I kept trying to get at the precise nature of how a branch connects to the tree and, and that, that, that very bond and thought, you know, the, somehow the molecular science or the cell biology or whatever there, there's something in the actual bond that was going to say something to the question of the phrase, the word of remaining in me. Some structural truth, some purpose, some operational truth that would illumine the Greek word truth. So I kept asking Dr. Peters, who was way too busy uh, for all of my questions, what's the perfect, what's just perfect about the bond between a branch and a tree? What's just right? And I, I used that kind of language, and he just kept pausing and then sending me some stuff, but the stuff he sent me wasn't the stuff I wanted him to say. So finally on Wednesday, I have like pages and pages of notes from him, and none of it was what I was hoping was going to happen. I just phoned him and I said, I know you're busy marking exams, but give me 10 minutes on the phone. Maybe on the phone if we talk about it, I'll get it. And so we talked on the phone, and the first thing he says to me, and in seven minutes it starts to click. He said, John, to say what's just right is something that a scientist would say just isn't reality. It's always a compromise between better and worse. We see changes within an individual species and across closely relational related species. Then he went on to talk about how branches and how they connect. That changes all the time, all over the place, depending on time and place. He talked about how plants are always balancing the needs of the whole organism, and they make trade-offs all the time, so sometimes the branch is working this way, down into the roots. Other times it's coming up, it's working the other way, and depending on what the circumstance are, these trade-offs vary a lot. Some trees require rapid growth with high branch turn turnover, depending on the type of tree they are. Some trees need to grow tall and sacrifice lower branches more quickly to get there. Some need radial growth in order to 
uh, do what they do as a tree, and that imp impacts how they do their branching. Some are non, not as strong a competitor in the ecosystem as others and have shorter light, lifespans, and that impacts how a branch works in that tree. Some need more branches to strengthen the trunk, some need less, some are more adaptive to others, like coniferous, uh, conif uh, tolerant conif coniferous trees can adapt to their environment. Aspen trees, they got to kind of do what aspen trees do, so that affects how branching happens. And he goes on and on and on. It's like a flood. And then finally, I'm cluing in. Maybe what I'm looking for is not a fixed A plus B equals C, go to heaven, pass, go. This is your life. Have a good week kind of thing. Maybe it's adaptive, organic, flexible and very time and environment sensitive. He went on, what's fascinating is that even in the lifetime of a single tree, that single tree will often modify its growth form as a reflection of the environmental condition, conditions it experiences. So there isn't even one ideal form for a single plant. Plants are highly flexible and highly responsive to their environment and really only grow to the extent that a particular environment allows them to. Then I thought of Bordeaux, the philosopher's idea of the habitus, and do we really shape our lives, or is it everything around us that allows us to become and be who we be? God's everything around us. And I start to realize that Jesus may have as many ways for you, the branch, to abide in Him, the vine, as there are branches in our world and people and circumstances and times. Dr. Peters went on to talk about how most animals have to grow at a fixed pace, and that really doesn't vary much. But plants, he said, it's different. If the environment is harsh, plants grow slower. If it's favorable, it may, the plant may invest a lot more energy in leaves. If you're short on water, you invest energy on, in roots. If conditions are favorable and there is light, the plant invests more energy above ground. This form is incredibly plastic. It's really remarkable just how flexible a plant's life and growth strategy is. And the whole time, for those seven minutes, he's saying all this stuff, and it's dawning on me, you know, Jesus is teaching about the Spirit blowing where it wills. You control freak, John. The, the wind blows wherever it pleases, Jesus said, through the branches of the forest of life. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it's going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. I mean, far too much of my life, for decades now, I've interpreted this particular passage as a very fixed thing. And, and it is fixed. You have to remain in Jesus. That part is fixed. But how you remain in Jesus and how you, your, you the branch in your life now in this place, as compared to you, as compared to a woman in Honduras right now, as compared to a 16th century priest like Luther or Calvin, as compared to disciples James, John, and Mary, as compared to Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, how he remains in you and you in him right now in your life, given the current environment that you're now living in, that could be as unique as you are from the rest of all of the rest of us. It's an extra rest in there. From the rest of us. And yeah, there's a commonness because we're branches. And branches are made to abide in the tree and the vine. But branches, you know, they're want to go this way, want to go that, want to go. Depending on So that changes it then. It's not X for you. It's X for you as a branch and me and us together in this tree that he's planted here.
One thing that is common is that when we're not rooted in him, we're in trouble. Jesus said warning words in this parable, you know, lots of upside about bearing fruit and what remaining in him can result in, but also these words. I am the true vine, and my Father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. No branch can bear fruit by itself. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you're like a branch that's thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. As I spoke to uh, Dr. Peters about my aha moment at minute seven of our conversation, he made an interesting observation. He said, when I look at plants and I think about how a Christian responds to the pressures of their environment, some can say, this is how God's made me to be, and he used it as a kind of an excuse tone. Then he paused and he said, well, perhaps that's the way God made you to be. But there's also this tremendous capacity for God to work and transform and mold us to be servants in different settings. And we need to be responsive to that. We need to recognize our giftings and our calling and serve where we are perhaps most effective. But within that, too, there's incredible capacity for growth. And when a a botany professor says that, knowing what he knows about how a plant will do what it takes to thrive in the context the plant has been planted, and the capacities, these these adaptive, flexible, based on context abilities that a simple plant has made on that day when God made a plant, that that the the truths of the, that God spoke there, and the, the application to our lives, it just carried a weight when he said those words. There's an incredible capacity for growth. And then he went on to talk about the church with many members has that flexibility, and probably even more, much greater flexibility. I say this often here, you know, like, you're a branch that's rooted in a vine, that's rooted in God, who was the God of Abraham. So you're being called to what in your life? Abraham's protege, Abraham's seed, this is no joke. This, this is life. And trust me, insofar as I am able to, in those few moments, just stay connected and reach out to the place where I'm being called to, there is power and great and, fruit, uh, and a fruitful joy in abiding in Him. The God who wrote this and all of the people in history and the stories in this book wrote you. Same God, same power, same urgency to his call. The God who wrote that beautiful tree on 51st Street wrote you. And he calls you to flourish and be fruitful. Through Jesus Christ, God spoke that word to us. Through Jesus Christ, God spoke this word to us. And through Jesus Christ, God is calling you, saying, I am the vine and you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Let's pray. I guess it's easy... uh, to go to the place of hearing you, your words there, Jesus, and uh, hearing both the upside of fruitfulness and the downside of 
the semi downside of pruning and the definite downside of uh, falling off the tree to ask, uh, where am I? And am I one of your followers? And is my life rooted? Am I remaining in you? And where exactly is the fruit that's being born through me? through us. Where are we as a community uh, adapting and uh, sensing uh, the time and uh, changing and moving and more deeply rooting and, and being a branch in one direction and then switching it out into another direction and responding to the wind of your spirit so that we can flourish so that your city can flourish. Help us to know as we uh, maybe ask those questions uh, that this isn't a race and it isn't about weighing harvests at the end of the day. All you're asking is uh, remain in me. Stick with me as I stick with the Father, as we stick with you. Be with me as I am with my Father and am with you. We, we can do that. Help us to do that with all of our hearts, everyone in this place, wherever we're at with you. And in the doing, help us to know the power and the glory of your fruit bearing in this world and the keeping of the promise that was made through the prophet Isaiah about budding and blossoming, filling the world with fruit. Help us to be in on that story, to know you in that, to love you in that, to serve you in that, we pray. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen.